how did we get to this situation where we've got record high coral cover despite the fact we've had four massive bleaching events which supposedly killed a huge amount of coral clearly there is a problem with the quality assurance with of the the science they call it the replication crisis so what we've got is that it turns out that about 50 percent of the recent scientific literature has got problems with it. So for example, this paper which came out just a few years ago, and there's literally hundreds and hundreds of new papers coming out on this, 1500 scientists lid, uh, lift the lid on reproducibility. What do we mean by reproducibility? Well, if I as a scientist may, um, do some work, I publish a paper, and uh, it, it then what should happen is that another scientist should be able to do more or less the same thing same experiment or whatever and get more or less the same result they should be able to reproduce it but it turns out that only about half the time is that original work reproducible that's terrible that that's actually a scandal that half of this work is wrong these two guys here did re and some other people did replication studies on a whole lot of stuff on the effect of the of carbon dioxide on reef fish which supposedly said said that the reef fish were doomed it found it all wrong. The whole thing was wrong. Normally what happens with peer review is that it gets given to maybe two other scientists who are in the field and they look at it for maybe a couple of hours. That's it. It may be a day at the most, generally speaking not. I've done hundreds and hundreds of peer reviews and that's basically what it is, right? This is our main quality assurance system. So it is so cursory and so slight that it's not surprising that a lot of wrong work actually gets through in the world, the Lancet, Richard Horton, he said, we know that the system of peer review is biased, unjust, unaccountable, incomplete, easily fixed, often insulting, usually ignorant, occasionally foolish, and frequently wrong. It's a scandal. And as a scientist, I find it acutely embarrassing. The other thing is that it almost guarantees groupthink, right? Because you're, you're, you're circulating amongst your peers. You give your peers your work essentially to review. Now what's going to happen there is groupthink is almost inevitable because if you're a dissenter, right, if you, I don't think that is correct. Now you can't get your work published because you want to publish a, a, a you know, different evidence that says something different. The peers don't like that for whatever reason and now you can no longer be um, published. And groupthink is very, very bad because you want a debate, you want an argument. If you look at all the major, um, you know, big scientists of their time, they were all dissenters to start with. Einstein and Newton and Darwin, they were all dissenters, right? We have this fellow here, John Ionides from Stanford University, a mathematician, works in the biomedical area. And he published this amazing paper demonstrating why most published research findings are false, or at least in the biomedical area when drug companies um, who want to take, say, a promising university research finding that demonstrates that a particular chemical cures cancer, right? The first thing they will usually do is try to replicate that ori original work. They will usually do it, not always, they should. And they find that when they did that, about 80% of the original work was wrong, right? 80%. And this is by prestigious scientists prestigious universities. It's not just, you know, some Tom, Dick and Harry here. Which means that some wonderful institutions have been untrustworthy to us. They've let us down. And other institutions who've reported on this and will not report on the dissenters have let us down. And this is a horrible, horrible thought for most people, including myself, right? That these institutions have let us down. We then have things like legislation in Queensland, which is really damaging the farming community. They're being blamed for killing the reef and they're being told to restrict all sorts of things that they do. It's restricting every major industry in North Queensland. And there are other examples of where this bad science is reaching through and, and actually affecting real people in a real way. So in Canada, they're restricting fertilizer usage 
they're going to reduce it by up to 30 percent. Well what's going to happen? There's going to be a reduction in the amount of food that Canada produces. They export a huge amount of their food. It's also based on some highly dubious science. I won't go into the details. The same thing is happening in the Netherlands where they're restricting agriculture based on some dubious science. The only way you get to the truth or closer to the truth is by having an argument and what we need to do is we need to audit a lot of this reef science. Who would argue against spending a little bit more money checking that reef science? Guess who would argue against it? Who does argue against it? The institutions which I'm saying have got it wrong and who have now demonstrated to be wrong, all right? Ring the church bells. We're in a convent, so this is really good. that We could ring the church bells, take a day off school on Monday, celebrate because the reef is in absolutely wonderful condition. We're at record high coral cover. Go back to your school and tell all your friends because it really is wonderful news and we should all be rejoicing on that. Thanks very much.